Sound the recruiting cannons. Luke Fickle has got another one. Plus, we got Rasheed. We got Justin. We're going to get Rasheed's season take. A ton of comments. Plus, Washington and Oregon in the Big Ten. What could that mean? Loaded show on today's Locked On Badgers. Plus, your comments. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in, as always. Um, today's show, we have a we have a new sponsor. Today's show is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Today's episode, uh, go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. When you enter promo code locked on college, they'll throw in a free Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Bird Dogs, the best, uh, basically the best pants you can buy on the market. Uh, I got some of myself. I'm really excited about it. All right, let's bring Justin in. Let's bring Rajiv in. Uh, gentlemen, Rajiv, right. Justin, we have the tripod. We haven't done this well, in a while. First thing I want to ask is, can you get a pair of those pants with the fish uh, pattern that you have on the wall behind you there? <laughs> I am at the cabin. For those for those on the podcast who aren't can't see us, I am at my kind of occasional cabin. Um, so <clears throat> doing some work up here. I got sunburned today, uh, power washing the house. I'm sure everybody on YouTube is like, geez, dude. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like this show never stops, right? We put out content, whether I'm at the cabin, uh, whether I'm sick, whether I have salmonella poisoning, whatever it is, <laughs> I've been going through it. <laughs> like, listen, like Keanu Benton, I'm not missing any reps. Um, I want to start here. So we're going to talk about the new commit. We got to fire the recruiting cans. We're going to do that. But Justin, you and I did a show. We, we broke down the schedule. We did our over-unders. Rajiv wasn't part of that. Uh, I want to throw this comment up from the commandant. I have us at nine and three just like realistic Ryan. I feel like that's where I'm at. I'm a realistic guy, uh, but I can see eight and four. I can't get on board with the ever optimistic Justin at 10 and two. Um, Commandant, as always, appreciate the comment. Just, uh, Justin, you're at, you were at 10 and two on your season prediction. I was at nine and three. Rajiv, where are you at on your season prediction? I think it's first of all funny that the ever optimistic is like the last name I could right. ever pick for Justin of all the yes. things. Uh, but yeah, so I, I listen to your guys' shows. Great. Um, I'm in nine and three, and I'm going to break it down just a little bit deeper for that. I think the first thing I disagree with you guys on is Purdue. Yes, I mean, I know you mentioned that on the show that I, I definitely feel like that's a trap game. It's also a night game, Friday night on the road. That's really difficult to do Friday night games. That's, I mean, we know about Big Ten atmospheres. I know it's just Purdue. But a couple quick things about them. Obviously, Hudson Card is there. And I know that, Justin, you said that you didn't think that you thought they would get, have a regression offensively. They probably will a little bit. But they're still returning guys like Sheffield and Rice, their receivers, that, that had a good production. They did lose their, their big guy, Jones. But they have people that I think – look, that that offense is is not just gone. And, I, yes, I know that Brom's not there. But that, to me, is – a game that I'm very nervous about. I think I'm going to be going to that game with my family because my parents live in Lafayette, Indiana, so I might be doing that. So I'll do a reaction show from the road if I'm there for that. Uh, I hope it's a win, but I think that's a loss. I think Wazoo is a loss. That's kind of my iffy one. Ohio State and Purdue, I think, are losses. And then if somehow we go to Washington State, we can get a win, 10-2. and two. But my actual prediction is 9-3 and three because I think we lose to Washington State. If for some reason we win that game, we maybe we beat Purdue, I still think we're going to be finished nine and three because there's going to be some place else that we slip up. I disagree with you guys with the Iowa game coming home. Like I, I, I mean, I think we might even try to go to that game. I really don't see Iowa and their anemic offense doing anything. Like we're, I know our defense might regress a bit, I mean, but they can't score on us. And do we really think Longo's offense is not going to score on them? I think we're okay. So I think I was a win. We might slip up somewhere else. Nine and three is my official prediction. Okay. So you're on the, so this does make it a clean sweep for us, by the way, the over under on FanDuel is 8.5. Yes. Every member of the tripod is going over, which means it's not going to hit, right? Like that's, that's how Vegas works. If y'all, if y'all take the obvious thing, that means that we're going to be eight and four somehow. But uh, the, the only thing with Purdue for me is I feel like that the schedule actually sets up pretty well for the Badgers. The week before is Georgia Southern, which is, that's a pancake game. They're going to yeah. blow them out. The, you know, they're going to have time. And the week after Purdue is a, a bye week, it feels like a, a game where Wisconsin, there's no overlook sandwich there. It feels like a really good setup for Wisconsin schedule-wise. The weird one that we didn't talk about is Illinois comes after, I think, after Iowa. It's a road game, right? Mm -hmm. After it's between Iowa and Ohio State. Mm -hmm. the, the at Illinois one's actually kind of weird from a schedule standpoint. 
I think that that the Illinois thing though is like after what's happened, after what happened last year, I feel like the guys are going to be really up for that. That's mm-hmm. a game that there's a little revenge in there. Purdue's a team that we've beaten 15 straight times, and it's just one of these games. It's a, it's, it's going to be primed for a loss. That's why I'm I'm a little more leaning towards losing against Purdue. But still, nine and three, going to be a good year. We got to see that growth from the whole program, and it should be good. I just have no clue what they're going to have for an offensive scheme. Like everything, all that went out sure. the door. We have no clue what they're going to be running. I would assume they have, something. They have the players. They've got good yeah. talent still. All right, let's go into um, – that's just kind of a quick wrap-up. As Jay Daly points out, it seems like we've entered the zone where we run out of things to talk about, maybe take 30 days off. <laughs> Jay, you could just take 30 days off. You don't need to tune in. <laughs> like, what, what are you doing here for out of things to Shots talk about? Shots fired. Like, by the way, if you miss the opening tagline, your team every day, Jay, take 30 days off, I'll get fired. Besides, we have a commit to talk about, Jay. We have plenty to talk about on Lockdown Badgers, plus a ton of content coming up you're not going to want to miss. But first, let's fire them cannons. Fire the recruiting cannons. Another one is headed to Madison on Wisconsin. All right, let's get it. So uh, the Badgers did pick up. They've been after a transfer cornerback for a while. We've all talked about the depth at this position for a long time. They picked up, and here we go, Nazir Forquin, I believe. Forkerin. 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 We, so we think we think we think we're working on it it just happened we actually were going live to do the show anyway and then he committed before um so it gives us something else to talk about which is great he played at grand valley state which is obviously the uh that's where mitchell was coaching previously before coming to wisconsin the cool thing here is he committed to vanderbilt he was a transfer guy committed to vanderbilt and then flipped to wisconsin so this is a guy that an sec school is on if you look at vanderbilt's track record with uh transfer portal guys they don't take very many they're pretty selective in the portal actually some of that's obviously an academic, academic thing yeah. but some of it's also like they look for for good fits unique players uh so for Corinne, obviously six foot one fits that luke fickle mold uh justin i'll kick it over to you obviously we we need to dive a little bit more in on the film and the backstory here but it seems like from a size standpoint they've added somebody at the depth chart that that fits at least what they're looking for yeah i mean he's a nice pickup six one uh 185 so he's got the size that that Fickle and them like. He was an All American in Division Two. So I mean, listen, he he may not jump off the page in terms of athleticism, but he's probably a guy that I would say fits in as a guy who can be productive and be a, a good, you know, depth piece on this team. So I mean, that's a nice pickup for us to give us a guy who's got some reps under his belt and is used to starting. Obviously, it's going to be a jump up for him a little bit, but I think he's a guy that can provide some quality depth if you need to put somebody out there. Yeah, I mean, I think he had 15 or so pass breakups last year, a couple of interceptions. He's got good ball skills. He's got, um, you know, he's really, he's got good vision. I watched some tape from high school um, and his D2 time at, at Grand Valley. And, you know, he's, he's not, he doesn't jump off the page. Like Justin said, he's not, he's not, it doesn't look like a Snowden. That's just going to be like this athletic freak, not that, but a guy that definitely can play on the outside can provide depth behind Hallman or Smith, which that we need that. And, you know, I think that I like the fact that he tracks the ball. Well, he's not afraid to make plays and he's got pretty good closing speed from everything that I've watched. Certainly we need to dig in deeper, but from the 15 minutes I watched, I think, I think it's a good, it's good depth pickup. If nothing else, the guy's got some college experience at D two level. He played really well there. I mean, obviously if Vanderbilt and sec schools are looking at them, although it's just Vanderbilt, it's still something. So yeah, I mean, we talked about Smith and Hallman and Matry and how the, how good they're going to be, but you know, with Arnold and, um, I'm forgetting someone's Dude, name Declona. now. The Clona, yes. And, and him backing him up, that kind of shores things up for the cornerback position and just one more one more depth piece to uh, building defense. Yep. Uh, Corey said he, he, a lot of the same things you just said, Rajiv. Corey says uh, kid has great size, nice closing speed, ball skills, height will help in the red zone, jump balls. Um, a couple other people here. Let's see. RB said someone on the bandy board said they look forward to not having to learn how to pronounce his name. Yep, RBI I got you there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, one thing I would say, and I see Badger Gator's got a comment here too, is I think some people are looking at the the Division II, the Grand Valley State thing. If you had just gone in uh, a Vanderbilt cornerback who played a lot less year and you flipped him, I think we'd feel pretty good about it. This is a guy that Vanderbilt wanted. In a lot of ways, it's not that different. He was a Division II All-American. Also, the first player, just a little background here, the first guy from his family, first person from his family to attend college. So 
uh, definitely somebody who has a work ethic and seems to, to care about the process mm-hmm. there. And, and when you are a division two all American, you can play D one football. I mean, that's pretty much what that means. Like you're one of the yeah. best playable that division, which means you can certainly play maybe not excelling at the next division, but you can clearly play in the next division. If you're excelling at the one below. Let's see. Um, I lost my comment. I apologize. Wes Mullenick said who committed a uh, cornerback out of uh, Grand Valley state, but he had been committed to Vanderbilt and I'm going to have to say the name one more time. Nazir Forkerin. Thank you. So <laughs> He's never going to get this right. All next year, Ryan's <laughs> going to get it wrong every time. You know what I'll do is I'll, I'll come up with it. just going to call him Nazir. I'll call him Forky. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll come up with some type of nickname. <laughs> but listen, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we are also talking. There's been a lot of smoke recently. Big Ten expansion. Washington and Oregon have, have been mm. talked about. The Big Ten ad- administrators are meeting as well, talking scheduling and divisional realignment. We got a lot to talk about about the Big Ten and things we want to chop up. We're going to talk about that next on Locked On Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our new friends over at Bird Dogs. And if anyone ever told you pants can't change your life, they've never worn Bird Dogs. It is about fit, comfort, versatility. I True story. This summer, because I work from home, so I often dress down. Like I, I, I went out to my local breakfast joint and a lady came up and thought I was homeless and Told me it'd be all right. So this is a true story. Um, she came up. She's like, hey, it's going to be all right. I said, thanks. <laughs> um, the point is, I, I struggle finding comfort in good looks. Bird Dogs fits that niche for me. They look classic. They have incredibly stretchy fabric. Make my legs look great, but they're still comfortable like my basketball shorts. No more looking like a homeless man out at my breakfast joint. It's called Tim's Bistro, by the way. I get the, the burrito wrap there. It's fantastic. Uh, Bird Dogs has done that for me. Incredibly different type of pants. It's stretchy, but it's also comfortable. So if you're into something that looks good, but also needs to feel good, feel flexible, Bird Dogs is the place to go. Go to birddogs.com slash college when you enter your promo code college. That's birddog.com slash college. And when you do that, um, they're going to throw in a brand new Tumblr for you, Bird Dog Tumblr. Um, it's absolutely awesome. I'm going to throw their, their thing up here so you can see it on YouTube. Anyway, Bird Dogs, it's a new friend of the show. Uh, we're going to take a quick break there to say thank you to everybody that's tuning in, everybody that is watching, every all the everydayers. If you're going to be here tomorrow, you're going to see uh, a really fun interview with somebody from inside the Wisconsin NIL department. Uh, a lot of questions there. If you're on later this week, we have Brian Smith, the scout from the southeastern part of the country, coming on talk more Badger recruiting. And then Friday, listen, we got something coming up. I don't know yet, but it's going to be great. Let's bring Justin and Rajiv back on. Um, guys. I, I was just going to say, if, if you know how much Ryan likes his basketball shorts, you know he loves bird dogs. That's true. <laughs> I did get called homeless the other day. Like this lady came up to me in the bistro because my car is kind of a hoopty, whatever. It's paid off. Um, not to get not to get off too much tangent because nobody wants to hear, but I got to like, I, she came up to me. She's like, hey, it's going to be all right. Like life is going to get better for you. I just said, thanks. Um, <laughs> it, it's, you know, whatever. Um, all right, let's keep going here. So, there's been a lot of smoke recently. We know, I think we know the Big Ten isn't done expanding. The SEC is not done. The college football landscape isn't set. Um, a lot of smoke, Washington and Oregon potentially being linked to the Big Ten. I want to start there. What, and we'll, we'll kick it over to Rashid to start this one. What is your feel on Washington and Oregon as potential Big Ten fits? Well, so selfishly, I like it because I live on the West Coast, and that means I can watch more. I can go to more Badger games without having to fly across the country in multiple time zones. So that's good. Um, but from a, from a strength of the conference, like, I don't think there's a lot of misses when it comes to Washington, Oregon. Now, when we added Rutgers in Maryland, we were adding great academic institutions. Of course, we were adding a New York market, but it was just about the New York market. And we didn't add a lot of beef to our football schedule. Clearly this does that Oregon obviously is a storied program that has done very, very well over the years. Um, Washington kind of a hit or miss program, not necessarily huge, but I think it's really good. I, I like that. I like the conference expansion because it puts a lot of emphasis on the league champion, of course, which we're going to talk a little more about that as well. Um, but I like adding beef to the league. And frankly, I like spreading the league out. I know that a lot of people weren't exactly huge fans of the USC UCLA thing. I was again, selfishly, but because frankly, I'm tired of the SEC getting all the hype of being the best conference of football every year. And frankly, while I don't think they're top to bottom the best conference, they have the best teams. They've won the turn. They've won the championship many, many times. So I do want to see us grow and expand and make it a little diff- make more difficult. Add a little more to the conference. 
from a revenue perspective, I don't think it's going to be harmful to us. I mean, you're adding brand new markets. You're adding more of the West Coast. Frankly, you're taking the best teams in the Pac-12 and you're moving them to the Big Ten. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and yeah, I, to me, there's not a lot of negatives that come from it. Um, I wish we could divest ourselves from Rutgers in Maryland and add in um, these guys to keep it at 16. But the two teams of Washington, Oregon, I think add a lot overall to the conference. And I'm not happy. I'm not mad about it at all. However, the big negative is I don't want to go play on that stupid basketball floor in Oregon, and I don't like that. Other than that, no problem. Maybe we can make, maybe we can make that part of the deal. <laughs> they have to replace the floor if they come yeah. to the Big Ten. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'm, here's the first thing I'm going to say. It sounds like if this is going to happen, that Washington and Oregon are going to have a reduced revenue sharing to start. So they're going to have to earn their way in. I honestly think that the – the markets are being somewhat overblown in the way people are talking about it. I think it's going to become far more about matchups going forward in terms of what it provides. And you, I think we'd all agree if we're looking at a game between Wisconsin and Oregon or Wisconsin and Washington versus Wisconsin playing Purdue or Rutgers or whoever, the ratings are going to be off the charts in comparison. Like it's not even going to be close. Like we could, if, if we're going to look and argue that it's like, why are you take a look at this and are they making the conference better? And I think we we could argue there's quite a few teams out there that would legitimately be positive net gains to the conference in terms of what we're adding for the product, which gives you more bargaining power because you have more good matchups to sell. Um, I think a big part of this is, and I don't know, you know, when this is going to happen, but I do think that it is something that they are considering because I think was, I think the big Ten's learning, they need to be proactive on this. If they're going to make things happen, they need to. They want to be the team making their choices and not reacting to what's left. Yeah, I, 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 I sorry. I want one more thing. Thing I yeah, want to yeah. quickly add is that I think that in all this Big Ten expansion, I think we are the holy grail of the expansion is still Notre Dame. If we can find a way to get Notre Dame in this conference, I want it. It's mm-hmm. perfectly positioned geographically for the Midwest. Of course, it is a school with rich tradition, and whether you like them or hate them they would be huge for this conference. And with USC coming in, there's a natural big rivalry. That to me is the Holy grail. Getting them in here is something that as we talk more about expansion, we need to focus on them. I know they don't want to come in there, but we've got to find a way to get them in. Well, one other thing that just to not to cut you off Ryan here, it sounds like the ACC teams that matter are meeting and trying to figure out how things can be handled with regards to their, their rights with the, uh, the television agreement there. So there are dominoes in play here, and it would not shock me if that if the SEC takes a shot at Clemson. Like, that would be a huge get for them. But if Clemson leaves the ACC, Notre Dame's strength of schedule takes a giant hit. Like, that's one of the few games that they can count on to provide value for their schedule. And suddenly you have a lot of teams in there that are pretty meh when you're looking at the end of the season. Now, with a 12-team playoff, you still have good odds if you have a good record. But it's really going to be an underwhelming product that they're bringing to the table. And who knows if they'll still be able to play USC going forward. USC has no reason to want to play a game against Notre Dame when they're going to be going to the Big Ten, which is already a tougher schedule than what they've had playing in the Pac-12. And now you're going to have more uh, league games. So it's going to be, in their regard, why take the risk? Like, let's get a couple of cupcakes on there and then just deal with the Big Ten schedule. Yeah, I actually look at it the other way with Notre Dame. <clears throat> oh, so I, I agree with Rajiv. That's that's the golden grail for the Big Ten, yeah. obviously. I think that's a huge get if they can get them. But from Notre Dame's standpoint, I don't know why they'd want to deal with the Big Ten. There's no way stri- a bad strength of schedule or not a, a good record Notre Dame is getting left out of a 12-team playoff. Like, we all know how that's going to play out. They're going to be in every single It, it will be financial. The the thing is, it's going to come in down the playoffs to- with the NBC market. Like, they're going to make enough money. Now, they'll make more in the Big Ten, but... They can also get to the playoffs well, every single year. With if Clemson schedule. leaves the ACC, though, then that the media money that they potentially want, they're probably on their own independent deal. I don't. Are they yeah. sharing? And they just, they just they're, renegotiated. They're, yeah. yeah. They. My my bigger point is like their their road to the playoff would be easier. Yeah. Not but they're already the leaving like thirty million dollars on the table. If I if I recall correctly, what their negotiation was in comparison to everything else. So there's a substantial amount of money that they're leaving off the table by not joining up with somebody. Yeah, I, I hear that. Um, a couple of really quick comments here. I'm, I'm interested in this one. We rarely get a, uh, a Boiler fan, random Purdue fan here. This is from Big Ten Boiler, our big time Boiler. Just want to say excited the Whiskey Purdue game got moved to Friday night. Should be a great environment. Uh, big time Boiler, Rajiv down there 
thinks you guys are going to beat us, which I, so I, I we loved your take on the game. Um, we disagree, uh, but I would love your take on that. Jake I Narrow says, I'll, I'll Ryan be there Herring's, big time, boy. I'll be Jake there. I Narrow says, Ryan Herring's car will make it to Oregon. He'll have to buy a plane ticket. That is true. <laughs> that is 100% true, Jake. My car will not. Um, I drive cars until they die. One of my cars right. literally died on the road, and I had a firework that I set off like as a farewell to it on the side of the road as <laughs> so I was waiting for help. And then it started on fire. <laughs> so that is 100% true. Um, I want to really quickly point out something that none of the decision makers who who make these expansion decisions care about. Um, but the fan aspect of it, I hate. I, I like I care about longtime Big Ten rivalries. I like playing Illinois. I like playing Big Ten schools. Now, not Rutgers in Maryland. Like that's nonsense. But more USC, more UCLA, more Washington, more Oregon. It means less games against. Illinois, Northwestern, Purdue, and I actually care about those things. Michigan State, Ohio State. Maybe it will mean less games against Rutgers and Maryland. Maybe, but it's going to mean less against all of them to some degree, and the fan in me hates that. Now, I don't know if it's going to affect things as much as you think, though. Like, we're talking, like, one game every three years. Not if you start adding Washington and Oregon on top of UCLA and USC. Depends how we break down the the conference. Maybe. I hear you, you, Ryan. I I, I hear that argument. I think that's that's fair because – you know, obviously, I grew up in the Midwest, and I, I feel like it's that that Big Ten culture of the Midwest is so important. But yet, once Rutgers and Maryland came in, that expansion just started to get to grow. And then I feel like over time, some of that sort of that nostalgic culture of the conference has really gone away. And it, we're at the point now where it's you know it's eat or be eaten. And if we don't go out and get these other teams, someone else will. And the Big Ten is going to just continue to suffer if we don't get it. I appreciate the fact that we are like the SEC and that we are going out and getting these good teams. I hear your argument though. I think it's a fair point because it really does kind of affect that, those, that Midwest roots. But at this point in this landscape of college football, you have to do this. Otherwise you're going to just die as a conference. Well, and so I, I do want to say, I agree with you that the people who make these decisions, they also don't care about the fan perspective. Right. Yeah. Right. Like the people that are going to say yay or nay to any of these schools, they don't give a crap that Ryan, the fan or Justin, the fan, whoever it is, is going to be missing out on a random Big Ten game. Like, they're looking at the bigger picture, which is fair. The other thing I would say, though, and this is where I maybe slightly disagree with you a little bit, Rajiv, is I don't think we're at the eat or be eaten point with the Big Ten. I I think the Big Ten is firmly established as one of the two catbirds, and there's very little that the SEC can do to to dislodge that, right? And I don't think there's anything the ACC, the Pac-12, or the Big 12 can do to to make up that ground. They went out and got Texas and Oklahoma. That's a humongous mm-hmm. win for the SEC. And now we had to go kind of respond, and we did, getting USC, well, UCLA kind of. But So I, I think that it's like you're right. You're right for now that the Big Ten is kind of sitting okay. But if we don't continue to be aggressive, if you're not growing, you're standing still. And I feel like that's that's where we just well, we have to keep going. Here, here's how I look at it. If something were to happen with the Pac-12 where it gets, say, the best teams end up taking off and going to the Big 12, the issue that we have here is that we lose op- options for us. The SEC, SEC's options are still going to be teams that are likely going to be out of the ACC, and they're still available to them. So we lose opportunity that they don't. Now, I don't think the SEC is going to be going after Oregon and Washington. It's not them that I'm worried about in that regard. It's more that I could see like somehow like a weird amalgamation of of the Big 12 and Pac-12 turning into one conference and being like, okay, now we don't have really an opportunity to grab any of these teams. And if the SEC decides to grow again, now we're a step behind them rather than them being aggressive, taking these two teams on and saying, okay, we we kind of circumvented some of the difference there in terms of how you can look at us as a conference by grabbing these teams before they went somewhere else. Well, let's take a quick break there. We have to take a very quick break for our friends of the show and continue this discussion. Rajiv, I know you want to touch on scheduling as well. We got some comments that I'd love to hit on. So let's take a very quick break for our friends of the show, and then we'll come right back to this conversation. I want to take a quick second to thank, thank you again to every single person who's tuned in to uh, – this, this sunburn version of Ryan at the cabin. We got Justin and Rajiv. Uh, excited to have this conversation as always. The reason this show has continued to grow has been because of everybody in the communities, because of people like Justin and Rajiv and Dylan and Badger Gator and everybody else that supports it. So uh, thank you all so much for that as we continue this discussion. Um, I wanted to ask you guys this. Okay. Before, can I cut you off one, one second before you? Sure, Justin. 
<laughs> no, well, I was going to say, because you, you said you loved some of those old matchups that we had with Illinois and, and Michigan State. But can you tell me you're not going to be excited if Wisconsin has a, an Oregon game or a Washington game schedule? Really? Because those, those to me, that's an that's a ultra-competitive game. Those, those games like, don't I look mean at those that. two. So USC, sure. You, UCLA, Washington, Oregon don't mean crap to me. They really don't. And I could, I, I, I think that I, those are going to be very competitive matchups if those teams come in. Sure, the let's right. play them in the out-of-conference then. Like, I, I hear you. Like, those games are fun on paper, but – and this is only my opinion. I could totally be on an island on this, and I, I totally um, acknowledge that. But Wisconsin, Oregon doesn't mean anything to me outside of a Rose Bowl. Okay, it just doesn't. I would rather play Michigan State. Um, but again, I could be on an island on that, and I also acknowledge that the people who make the decisions don't care about what I would prefer in that's, terms of scheduling. That's just because Mel Tucker's their coach. <laughs> Maybe um, <laughs> it, they just those schools don't move the needle for me at all. Okay. Um, but very few schools outside of the Big Ten footprint really would. So I do want to go here, Rajiv. You wanted to touch on scheduling a little bit, how you maybe consider the Big Ten shaking this out. Obviously, Big Ten conference meetings are happening, ACC, Big Ten, all over the place. So where are you at with scheduling? What you want to hit on there? Yeah, I think it's really interesting because obviously what, what we've been reading now for the last few months is that the, the conference is going to do away with the divisions, um, which – for us, it's been very beneficial. It's We've been in the Big Ten Championship game many times because we're in the West and the East has won it every time. So that's pretty bad. Um, but I think that – so now we're going to go to, 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 to divisionless sort of situation and the best two teams are going to represent the conference of the championship. So what's being talked about right now are three different options um, and how they're going to set up the scheduling. So the first one is a protect three, which is basically you get – three protected opponents every year. And then of the remaining 12, you play six one year and six the next. So that's that's one of the options. The other option is a protect two. So you get your two rivals, and then every four years, you kind of will play the rest of the teams. Some you play two, some you play three times, depending on how the scheduling works. But the most intriguing option, which from what I read and what I'm hearing, I feel like this might be what they're going to go towards, which is the flex protect. So not everyone would have the same number of protected teams. So Minnesota, who has like 70,000 trophy games, can have up to three, and I think up to three. And then and then like a USC, UCLA, they might only have the one protected game with each other. And Wisconsin, of course, we would want Iowa and Minnesota protected. So that gives a lot more <clears throat> flexibility and scheduling and as far as, you know, creation of different more, um, you know, like um, competitive balance issues. It's kind of interesting. And what I'm, I'm concerned about that, because then if, if, you know, it depends on which your what your protected games are. So if you're if you're Michigan, your protected game is going to be Ohio State and Michigan State. Um, that's obviously a pretty heavy load versus a team like maybe Rutgers, who's going to have Maryland and mm -hmm. who, who knows. So that to me causes an issue in competitive balance. But I think that's most likely the scenario that we're going to go with. The thing I like about all the scenarios is it gets rid of the divisions, which not exactly good for the Badgers, but in general, I think it's nice. It will mean that the two best teams play each other in the championship game. It will mean a lot more, you know, changing in the schedules, who we play. We're going to get to play a lot more games against teams that we don't haven't traditionally played against in the East. So I like it all together. I'm interested to see what comes out. Should be something announced this week, hopefully, uh, but it might be in the later. But curious as to what you guys think about those options and what you guys might well, like. For, first off, I'll say on the third one, we've had weighted crossovers anyways. So yeah. like the top teams have had tougher schedules going forward so that the maryland you know rutgers situation there not a lot's going to change for them like that they're going to be playing roughly the same as what they would have played it's not going to get easier because i mean let's be honest ucla and and usc for them are going to be too much harder matchups than what they potentially could have played from the west so you know yeah. my regard i think that's probably the easiest one to figure out the best matchups for everybody if you don't feel obligated to come up with exact teams mm -hmm. for every team. Yeah. I think, I think three, three protected matchups is too much. I like the two. I agree. Um, <clears throat> because I, I don't think you can find an easy third for a lot of teams. I don't think you can find an easy second for some teams, quite mm -hmm. frankly, that you need to have on the schedule every year. That the interesting thing that you brought up, Rasheed, that I would like to get you guys take on. And if you're in the chat, let me know. You said losing the, the division format might not be great for Wisconsin. I'd argue that the division format hasn't helped Wisconsin considering we haven't won a title since it's it's been broken up from east west and the the west division has been so looked down upon that not being able to succeed in that division at times i think makes you look even worse mm -hmm. 
Well, but ultimately, I mean, I, I, I feel like it has helped us because we've been in that game. We've had a chance to go to the national championship, like to fight the playoff, and we but lost only, that game. Just, yeah, State. we've only been in that game, though, because we, the, our divisional opponents are so bad. True, and but we get that, to the title game and we're not ready to compete. It, I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't feel like we're forced to bring our level of competition up to a certain point because we've been mm-hmm. playing in the West. And now we're going to have to play to a higher level, yeah. which I think leads into hiring a Luke Fickle and leads into NIL being reinvigorated. Right. I think to it's going to force us to up our game, I guess is what I'm saying. To be fair, the other part of that is, is I don't think there's it's as big a difference as you think because we play Ohio State or Michigan almost every year anyway. So you're looking at it, it's like, we go divisionless. We're still playing them. Like it, not a lot of changes. What yeah, we but- might have is we might have a Penn State or a third team from the East Side that is a tougher opponent than what we normally have out of the East Side. But you have to remember a couple things. First of all, we have Illinois, Northwestern on our schedule every year right now. Per Minnesota. I mean, we've had a lot of lower end teams the big 10 on our on our slate we can't beat minnesota year. anymore well there's that <laughs> but but playing in that championship hey, game is this what coaching gives you staff a is to go to the rose undefeated bowl. against them we we've been in that game with an opportunity to go to the rose bowl so many times and now we're gonna have to fight really really hard to be one of the of 16 teams with michigan ohio state penn state UC, usc now we've got to be in the top two of that i agree it, it forces us to raise our game but it's not going to be easier to win the conference. I think it's going to be considerably more difficult because mm-hmm. we were in an easy situation where we just had to get through an, you know, Iowa and, you know, maybe Purdue some years. We, we have to get through a fairly light schedule in order to get to that game. Yes, we can't win that game, but we got there and that's a big difference. So it's going to be really hard, but I'm still looking forward to it because I like the matchups that are going to be created. Uh, White Reisman says, uh, could we possibly add the two Arizona teams would allow those West Coast teams to stay more on that coast? Maybe instead of, he's saying, Washington, Oregon. Arizona is a very good recruiting area. A lot of talent in that Phoenix, Scottsdale location. Wisconsin's tried to mine that at times. Both uh, the, the really quick thing with the Big Ten is they actually do care about academics. Um, ASU for starters. is a train wreck. In Arizona, I don't know what they really bring from an athletic standpoint. Um, I, I don't know if those that, schools are more – and intriguing I, than Washington, Oregon. Yeah. I've they don't bring respected. ratings for sure. Right. Like either one of those teams, neither one of them moves the needle with, with that other than Arizona basketball. That's about it. I've always respected that about the Big Ten. I think that's great. I mean, Nebraska, with that when Nebraska came in, they were the lowest rated of our academic institutions. And that was a bit of a – there was a lot of discussion about letting them in because they were a little bit on lower. And they were still in that top sort of upper echelon of the AAU – um, that puts that, that allows you to come into, into that conference because we have that the standard. But obviously with USC, UCLA, Washington, Oregon, they're fantastic schools. So there's that piece of it. I, I've always liked that about the Big Ten. The SEC cannot say that, although they've got a lot of great schools in the SEC, they cannot say that they're top-notch academic institutions. And what I've always said about the Big Ten, and because they have such a high standard academically, I believe that actually has helped the Big Ten grow from a revenue perspective. There's a reason that the Big Ten network has been really strong since its inception and why other conferences have followed. Our our graduates, if you will, the people that attend those universities from the Big Ten, they spread all over the country. Yes, it's because they're in the Midwest and they want to get to warmer climates, but also because they're such strong academic institutions that those guys get jobs all over the country. So that's why you have the Big Ten network is the, one of the most desired of all the networks, like the, the conference networks out West. It's very desired because there are tons of, of Big Ten alumni that live out West. <clears throat> there are tons that live out East. So that is a really big, big reason that the Big Ten has done so well from a revenue perspective. And, and it's I think it drives back to the fact that it has such high academic standards. So I'm all in favor of keeping that. And, what, and I don't want anyone to come in that doesn't have that. So then, yeah, then you're talking those Washington schools. Stanford yep. is always a name that's thrown out mm-hmm. there, Notre Dame for sure. Um, some ACC schools fit that bill if they can never get out of their ridiculous media, right? Uh, Virginia, for example, would make sense in that aspect as well. Sure. Um, a couple of comments here, guys. Let's wrap the show up on this. We got a couple of really good comments from the YouTube section. I want to get into these as well. Uh, we talked about Commandant Clinks agreeing with me and not the ever optimistic Justin with his nine and three record. Um, this is an interesting one. I want to kick it over to you guys. Uh, this is from C. Gross. I think Christian Gross, I believe is the name. Uh, he said, if all if you all think this team will underperform, saying we think 9-3 and three potentially, why did UW even hire Luke? What would the Badgers record be next year with Chris coaching? If you think it would be 7-5 and five or 8-4, and four, what was the point of Fickle? 
Whoever wants it first. Yeah. I'll start here. I'll say the point of fickle is not just for next year. That's the first thing. The point of fickle is the future growth of this program and everything that we believe that he can bring, which I believe will be a national championship in the next 10 years. And I think that that definitely is about future growth. If Chris was coaching, please, I mean, we, we would not have the roster we have. We would certainly be five and seven, six and six. It's not just about this year. My, my big point here is that, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to be nine and three this year, but I also think that in three years, we're going to be 11 and one, 12 and oh. So that's why I want Fickle here. That's why the change had needed to happen. Yeah. Year one is not the year that you're, you're rating him off of. Everything is going to be basically laying a foundation for the future of the team. You have all these new schemes that are coming in. You have a bunch of players that are not his guys that he's going to be working through and relying heavily on. So at this point, you basically are trying to, to get everyone comfortable and competent in your scheme so that, you know, next year, the year after you have a chance to really take off and explode as a team. And that doesn't mean they can't be, have a successful season, it just means that it may not be judged on as much by record as it is by do we look like we're making growth in terms of competency and offense? Do we, you know, do we look like a good offense? Does the defense look like what we're doing is going to be because here's the biggest difference that I see with the defense. It's going to be a far more versatile defense than what, than what Leonard did. Leonard had a very set way that he wanted to play things. And he was just like, we're going to be very disciplined and we're going to play you make you, make mistakes based off of how we want to play. This is a, we're playing with a, a team that effectively wants to match up the best way possible with you that they can to affect what you like to do. And that's, that's going to, you know, may not be perfect this first year, but it could be really good in a couple of years. Let, let's also point out that I, I, I picked nine and three, Rajiv, you yeah. picked nine and three, Justin. Now that is not underperforming, no. right? Uh, that's a good year. I actually expect good results despite the fact that he's he came in yeah we likely is, win the west if with that record we likely this win is the a, west. a bit of an example of the hype train outpacing the train that we actually think is on the tracks right the hype train has generated so much hype that somehow we've gotten to a point where us predicting a nine and three season there is an are, underperforming year and badger barstool today said don't be surprised if wisconsin makes the playoff this year no they're not so, making the playoff i know but i'm saying the hype the hype is out there like if you think that we're high on this there are there are writers taking a shot and throwing darts at a board saying Wisconsin may dark horse their way this year. I think that's that a little Badgers are currently that's overly 70, optimistic. Badgers are currently 75 to one odds to win the national title. Believe this. I did make that bet today. <laughs> As you should, but those I odds don't play you should. Yeah. 75 but to one. I think the bigger point is to, to everything you guys are saying, I, it wouldn't shock me if Chris with this roster or whatever roster he would have had, because it wouldn't be this roster had a seven and five year last year, but a seven and five year may not feel the same. Chris running it and recruiting the way it was as a seven and five, eight and four run with fickle averaging 25 points, a changing game. things up. So uh, I think we're going to pop it there. It's 37 minutes. We got 143 people watching again, a ton of comments, but again, we always wrap these comments back up and we do another reaction show. So every, all your takes are put into it. Um, we'll throw this one on here quick. Uh, Badger just says fantastic show guys. Again, that's a reflection of people in the community and these two fine gentlemen joining me here. Um, but with that, on Wisconsin, Bo Dragon had oh, there's a Bo Dragon comment in here too. Here you go. Over under two and a half years before Nebraska fires rule. I'm going oh, I think rule's gonna be solid. I, I think he'll hold on. He's gonna get them at least bowl eligible. I agree. Under. I think he'll be solid there. Wow. Can't wow. be successful in Nebraska. That is a that program is in shambles and it's gonna continue gonna be gonna continue to be in shambles. That's there are so big, many that's good. a massive rebuild. There are so many good comments here. I just want to read through a couple of them really quick. John Berger said, did you hear Missouri pass a law today that Missouri high school players can get paid NIL in high school if they commit to a Missouri school? Wisconsin should pass that. That that's, feels like something that's going to that's get interesting. Hit. That's going to get struck down because that would make an, oh. uh, that would be a competitive balance thing for recruiting standpoint. But, every, but I could recruiting is not even anyway. Well, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't really matter if NCAA gets involved or not at this let's, point anymore, does it? Let, no, but I mean, it's it's. It's almost like pay for play at that point, which is the, which is the actual rule. Except you're flaunting it at that point by saying well, we we're gonna say if you play here for us that you can do this before everyone else, which is an unfair advantage. By the way, let me point out that it's impossible to say. I'm just gonna read through a couple of comments quickly with Justin on the show. 
Sorry, Justin's going to react to everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm bad at That's this. Right? I have no, it's, it's good. No, That's I love hilarious. it. I love it. Um, a couple of just really quick ones. Uh, Mer says, next year's our year. Ryan Dexheimer says, sound the cannons. Bo Dragon just said, we can run the table. Uh, Bo Dragon says, Mordecai looks like he's throwing a shot put. Uh, Mer comes back next year and just has an insane amount of talent. That's why everyone's freaking out. If Mordecai has an insane year, we go 11 and 1 easily. Tyler Romaine says, great show, guys. Best locked on page out there by far. I appreciate that, man. Uh, John Berger said, Braylon Allen at, predicted 14-0 uh, and 0 when asked this year. That sounds good to me. Uh, this is a good one to end up on. Bo Dragon says, Paul Chris has the energy of a statue. <laughs> well, <Yikes>. Anyway, <laughs> on Wisconsin, y'all. Thank you so much. If you tune in tomorrow for the Everydayers, we have a great interview with somebody from inside Wisconsin's NIL department. The day after, we're going to have Brian Smith on talking recruiting. So a lot of great content coming up. Uh, unless you're that one dude who wants to take 30 days off. I hope everyone tunes in again <laughs> on Wisconsin and let's go.